Welcome to Gabriella Gear Pro, and today's video is all about the Aurora Borealis effect, also known as the Northern Light. So I decided to give it a try, and guess what? I had to create an entire scenario just for this Aurora Borealis to look good. So I play with this idea, and I think it looks really peaceful. I must see it in person one of these days. And I used Shader Graph for this. As usual, the whole project is on my Patreon page, links in the description. And let's jump right into it and let's see how to create this beautiful Aurora Borealis. So let's have a quick overview of the scene. Just wanna let you know that I'm using Unity 2020.2.1 and I'm gonna use the Universal Rena Pipeline for this project. So here's one of the scenes for the Northern Lights that I've created. As you can see, we have got some ambience going on. And one of the first things I did was actually the sky. But let's believe it was the terrain for a second. It's built in into Unity, by the way. You simply need to right click and in 3D object, you can add the terrain. Quite useful to add some quick mountain silhouettes in the background. The second step was the sky box, where I used the sky full of stars as a cube map. It's basically a texture where the shape is set to cube and you can get a texture by simply googling something like stars 8k for example. The third step was to add some fog down here still in lightning options, some exponential fog. Now the fourth step, I needed a layer between the terrain and the sky so I added some clouds, which are basically two spheres with a cloud shader, this cloud shader right here, these nodes are just for a mask just for this end result right here. The most important part is down here, it's basically scrolling a simple noise and then dissolving it with another simple noise. Then the fifth step, I wanted to add a few details to the sky, so I created a few shooting stars with the particle system actually. And it's basically a big box with a very very low rate over time and with a crazy velocity in the z-axis and with some size over lifetime and trails and that's basically it, we got some shooting stars. And for the sixth step, well, I created the Aurora Borealis, which is the focus of this tutorial. Oh, and by the way, I'm using post-processing effects, which is actually the last step. As you can see, I have quite a few. Then I have a bunch of Aurora's parent to an empty game object. Big planes, very big planes made in Blender. Actually, that's where we are going to start. So, in Blender, in the new scene, you can erase everything and with Shift A add a plane, rotate it 90 degrees in the Y, move it with G in the Z axis only one, and then scale it in the Y axis like 8, something like that. And if you press Z, as you can see, this doesn't have subdivisions, it's only a quad basically. To add subdivisions, go to the modifier and use the subdivision surface modifier the simple version, and increase the viewport to around 5. Yeah, that should do it. Now a very important step is the UVs. Click on this left bottom corner, drag to create a new window and up here select UV editor. And it's important because if you turn on this UV sync selection, if I select the bottom vertices of our plane in the UV area, they are badly rotated. So we need to rotate this 90 degrees and that's it. We are done with the UVs. Let's just reset the pivot. Shift S and select cursor to select it. Go to object mode and with Shift Ctrl Alt C, select origin to 3D cursor. And now the pivot is at the bottom of our plane. And that's basically it. Let's just rename this to Aurora plane, for example. And then with Ctrl A, let's apply location, the scale, and the rotation as well. Why not? And then you can save this directly to your Unity project, by the way. Now let's drag and drop our Aurora plane to the scene. I'm gonna press F to focus to find it. Okay. I'm going to click here for the top view and then drag this plane more or less to the middle of the terrain. Around here should be fine and then push this up in the y-axis 
so it's way up in the sky and increase the scale to 100 in the x, y and z. Something huge. Yeah, we got this big plane, now we can move on to the shader. So, with right click now on a folder, you can go to create and then select blank shader graph. I'm gonna rename it to Aurora Borealis Tut underscore unlit. Double click to open it up and yeah, in 2020.2, shader graph has changed a bit. If you don't see this graph inspector, panel you can click up here and it's quite important because we are going to say that the target of this shader is universal, the material is unlit, the surface is transparent and the blend mode is additive and make sure to turn on to side if you want to see this from the front and the back. Right so let's save this, you can push this window down here and let's add a color because we are going to need it. In this new Unity version, you need to select the property and then down here, you can go to node settings and now you can change the color to white, increase the alpha as well and set the mode to HDR. Let's drag it to around here. So for the Northern Lights shader, we need a noise. You can use the texture or you can use the built-in noise that comes with shader graph. I'm gonna use the simple noise, for example. And we have the scale option, we can create a float for that. Call it noise scale, something like that, with a default value of 30. And now, if we multiply the color and the simple noise, we can connect this to the base color of the fragment function of this shader. And if you save it, you can create a material out of this shader, assign the material to the aurora plane, drag and drop it and it becomes super bright because I have some insane post-processing effect. So what I'm going to do actually is go to the properties of the material and decrease the color. Instead of white, I'm going to choose a dark gray. Right, so as you can see we need to fix the tiling of the simple noise. And there's a note for that actually. You can search for tiling with spacebar and you get the tiling and offset note, quite useful connect to the UV of the simple noise and as you can see if we increase the X of the tiling we will stretch this noise and that's exactly what we need. You will see why in a moment. So let's create a vector to call it noise tiling, connect to the tiling and set the default value to 1 in the X and Y by the way. And since we are here let's also create another vector to for the noise speed because if you watch some northern lights you will see that they are moving. So we need motion. And whenever we need motion, we need a time node. Multiply these two together. And as you can see, if you play with offset node, you will scroll this text, right? You will scroll the simple noise. That's why we created a vector too and multiply it with the time so we can animate the simple noise. So we can make it scroll. All right, so save this shader. Make some room here. And in the material properties now, if we start increasing the X, like to around 7 for example, and then we shrink the Y axis to 0 0.1, we get something very familiar with what we are trying to achieve. Northern light seems like they are stretched. And remember, you could create a texture for this, but we got this simple noise that we can stretch and it looks pretty much like some northern light. And for the speed, like, Minus 0 0.05 or even less should be fine. Now we need to get rid of these hard edges and make the northern light seamless. And to get rid of the hard edges, we can use a mask. We can use a texture 2D for a mask. Let's assign a texture. Fortunately, we already have this default particle, which is going to be quite useful. And first we are going to sample this mask texture and then multiply it with a simple noise and this is what we get. The simple noise now is only applied where the mask is grey or white. Replace this connection, save this and... Nothing happens because in our material we need to assign the default particle like this 
and now we get this awesome result. It's pretty much already looking like some northern light, some white northern light. And you can control the radius of this mask, by the way, if you connect the mask texture to a power node. And then create a float, call it mask power, with a default value of 1, connect it to the power. And now in the inspector, if you decrease the mask power, you increase the radius of this mask. But it has its limits, of course. But you can play with that, at least. Or you can go to Photoshop and create a texture like this one, where it fades out to black around the edges. Right, so this is almost done. One of the last touches we can add is a bit of dissolve. For that, we can use another simple noise. We can reuse this noise scale and add a small value like 5, so it isn't the same as the other simple noise. And if we connect this to a power and multiply the power with this multiply and then play with the power node, as you can see, we have this kind of dissolve effect. Quite useful. Let's create a float for the dissolve power. A default value of 2 and connect it to the power down here. And connect this multiply, by the way, to the color. To the color multiply. And then save it. And as soon as we do it, you will notice that we will mess up the effect we had previously. Because we need to shrink this simple noise, we need to stretch it. We need this simple noise to have the same tiling as the other noise. So what we are going to do is copy all of these nodes, Ctrl C and then Ctrl V, and then connect it right here. And to add a little bit more randomness to this, you could create another vector too. For this tutorial's sake, let's simply add to the noise speed very small values to the X and Y, like 0 0.005. This way we make sure that they are not synchronized with the scroll. Let's save this asset and, as you can see, we got the Northern Light. Or at least a super close effect, without creating any texture, by the way. We only needed a plane with a lot of faces. Because in a moment we are going to use Vertex Animation, Vertex Displacement. You can pick up whatever color you want. Like some green, blue... You know, I'm gonna leave it at green. And now for the final part of this tutorial, we can use some vertex displacement. And fortunately, I already have a tutorial for that. This one, vertex animation. So make sure to check out that video, it's small. And you can copy those nodes and then connect it to the position of the vertex function, just like this. The only thing I want to show you is that this position node must be in object space. And as you can see, I'm modifying the X value only of the plane. And if you want to have a better perception on the Aurora Borealis, you can go up here to the shade option and set it to shaded wireframe so you can see the mesh and you will have a better understanding of how this is moving. So in my case, I'm only changing the X value of each vertex. But if I wanted, for example, to change the Z value of each vertex, I could do this, for example. And now it would animate vertically. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it as it was. Another thing that I want to mention is that right here at the beginning of this vertex animation, this position node must be on world, don't forget that. And I'm using the Z axis of the world as a reference. So that's all I wanted to show you about this vertex animation. I made an entire tutorial about that, you can learn more in the link left in the description. As you can see, if you change this to the X, it doesn't work in the same way or to the Y. It has different types of vertex animation, at least with this setup, right? But yeah, that's basically it for the Aurora Borealis effect. The only thing I did towards the end was duplicate this plane, move it around and create basically a scenario for the Aurora Borealis. Place them in a few special spots. But that's basically it for this tutorial, I hope you have enjoyed. Like I said in the beginning, this whole project is available on my Patreon page. 
as well as many other projects and many other assets, visual effects assets that you can use in your game. Your support would mean a lot to me. As usual, a big thank you goes to each patron. You keep this channel running and that's very important. And a special thank you goes to the top tier patrons of this month which are Alak Frost, Alejandro Hernandez, CKVFX, David Crew, Dennis the Geek, Goblin Plague, Imarais PC, Hostile Mars Game, John Nix, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Mariano Di Giuli Jr., Mikhail, Novo RKV, Oitsk, Swerving Tree, and Vincent Maverick. Thank you a lot for your support, guys. To everyone who watched this video, I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, please consider subscribing. And I really hope to see you in the next video as well. So thanks for watching.